ago, I decided that I had enough of corporate life and um, I just was getting burnt out. And um, I decided to follow my passion and uh, and work in the marine industry. So that's your next one there, yeah. So, okay, so the idea came, how the idea came is about, um, I'm a keen boat owner, I own a boat here. We, we bought a boat in the Gold Coast and brought it down and I found it very difficult to find services and products that were specifically marine. You know, so for argument's sake, if you uh, wanted to find a marine electrician, you had to sift through 10 domestic and industrial electricians before you found a marine one. And then you found that actually they weren't in Sydney, they were in Perth. So there was a major drama trying to find them. So we decided to build a marine directory website. Um, and the object of it was to put boat owners or marine enthusiasts in touch with marine products and services. So that's the, to the sole aim of the, of the, uh, of the website. So, if you want to, you want you want this so you can follow yeah, me, which is much easier. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So boat so boat back was launched. Um, the development get, began in, in two thousand and thirteen, and it's it's on WordPress, uh, and the site went live in uh, June two thousand and fourteen. So it, it happened fairly quickly. The listings were sourced from the internet or other advertising media sources. Base listing cost is made at no cost. So I wound up with a whole group of um, Filipino women and they became, I went up there and trained them what the front of the end of a boat was from the back end and uh, amazingly they caught on pretty well actually, they were pretty amazing and some of them are still working for me today. The first paying customers were, bought, were onboarded in September 2014 and I went full time into the venture in December last year. The functions, functions and interests were added to the site as we went and the reason was was that original concept of just having a directory site um, was actually flawed because people wouldn't be coming back to it often enough. So then we started adding first a boat sales section so we know that people use look at boats for entertainment value so they come back more and more frequently. Uh, we added um, boat clubs and events so if you want to know where a local event is, a fishing event or a sailing event you can pick it up from there. We've also got blogs and posts and uh, we've got a deals page as well on the website. But the reality is a lot went wrong, you know, and I started to sink. So the first thing was our CRM package was, uh, it had no automation, it was totally manual and it was very clumsy and highly inefficient. And so that was hurdle number one. <clears throat> the second was, you know, I'm a civil engineer and I've been in senior management for a long time and actually I knew very little about how the internet worked. I thought I knew, but actually I didn't have a blinking clue. I knew nothing about marketing, you know, and the engineer and me said, oh, you know, it'll take about two weeks to do the marketing, you know, just <laughs> so idiot stuff really, yeah. And, and then to make matters worse, I relied on one source of truth from the marketing and it was my developer. And it was a big mistake on top of a big mistake. So it was a huge, huge mistake and I'm still paying for that today. I was looking at traditional methods of advertising my product and I wasn't really thinking outside the square about what could be potentially available on the internet. Okay, so, and I, I then realised that I didn't have a brand. I've been working for big corporates for many years and you don't re understand until you get out of that environment the value of the brand. So that was a huge, huge problem for me. And last but not least is that we were doing everything on spreadsheets. So that was a was drama. So the result was that after an initial burst of traffic, our traffic started to dry up. So within a few months, we were, we were clocking 40 odd thousand page views a month. And I thought, well, we're, we, we're gonna be doing well. But after initial burst, it, it came back to about 20 to 25,000. I was saying, well, what's going on? <coughs> the worst thing was we could not keep track of uh, what we'd said to whom and was, uh, with respect to our customers. And that was the biggest drama. We were emailing people and we couldn't keep track of the emails or, or one person would email them and wouldn't know, another person wouldn't know what had been said and, and that was probably one of the key cornerstones of why I initially looked at Infusionsoft. It was obvious that we duplicated the effort in some areas and the potential customers were slipping away in other areas. So we were losing customers, we, we were just, they were slipping through our fingers, it was just terrible. And we were not getting new customers on board. So we've got that initial burst of customers coming on, but we weren't getting new customers. And our database was suffering from spreadsheet folly. So we had, what I mean by that was we'd had the CRM package. We'd started using spreadsheets initially. We then went to the <coughs> CRM package that was hugely clumsy. Then my staff had then reverted back to spreadsheets because they thought that was reliable. So any of you that are, that are, are used to big databases know how notoriously unreliable spreadsheets actually are. So. 
So sooner or later it was going to collapse on us. So we, I didn't want to do what's in this picture and have the whole thing come down on top of me. You know, it was going to be... Too scared, yeah. scared to press the next button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, that's all it is. So yeah. So anyway. So I found out about Infusionsoft in February 2015. And it did not take me long to realise that, that Infusionsoft was what I wanted. It, I just looked at a few online um, videos and I was absolutely convinced that that was the right way to go. So it didn't take very long. Um, I would have to say that uh, Infusionsoft's marketing power is pretty good. It gets you on the hook really well. I enrolled in the Kickstarter immediately and, and Jake over there was the first guy that uh, had the unfortunate experience to try and get me in line. So uh, Jake did a good job. Um, over two days, we, we definitely powered into it. Um, I really, and it's really important here, I think I really only initially purchased Infusionsoft to do one thing, which was to fix my email nightmare. But for any new users, I'd really recommend you try and understand what it potentially can do across the board. Because if you go in with a single view about this is all it can do, it actually will slow down your learning process. So I think there's a lot of value. And you, uh, I think. The, one of the big things I've caught on is about trying to invest a bit more time up front. A lot of us tend to go into Infusionsoft because we've got a particular problem in front of us, and so long as Infusionsoft solves that one problem, that's what we're going to do. But the reality is, is it can do a lot more, and if you think about it a bit more before you jump in, it actually will make your journey a lot easier. <coughs> I, I enrolled in the Kickstart immediately and um, I did the course and I thought I was set for life. Yeah? Oh, how wrong can you be? So anyway, so the project life cycle, I don't know if any of you have ever seen this kind of, uh, of uh, graph like this, <laughs> but basically you've got what I call the euphoria access where it's wow at the top or oh my god at the bottom. Now believe it or not, every project goes through a cycle like this. Like I've been in, in managing huge construction projects for most of my life and they all go through this cycle, every single one of them. And guess what, you know, Infusionsoft's the same and the object is to not, not let it deter you, you are gonna go through this. So we'll just, just go through one at a time, so just click. What's this, what's this? You'll see, okay. yeah. So the first one is I found out about Infusionsoft, okay, and, and I, you know, we were kind of at a neutral position there. And then, and then so I, we just, I just got to, yeah, I purchased IS and I was getting pretty blinking excited, you know, this was the way things were going to go. And by the time I, I completed Kickstart, I was right at the top of the curve, you know, it was wow and I was going to save the world, you know, so... But then we realised that I'd learned enough to be dangerous, real dangerous, and in actual fact, I knew next to nothing. Yeah, so we wound up going into a very, a very deep trough, and we can kind of laugh about it. But at the time, it was a really serious problem for me, and I really struggled with it. And I would suggest a lot of us go through this. But believe it or not, there is light at the end of the tunnel. So I met I met Richard via <laughs> yeah. So I, I met. Tell to put that in. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> And I also got, I got uh, VA out of, initially out of India, and I would like to talk for a couple of minutes about virtual assistance offshore. So I've had mixed um, actual um, experiences with them. I initially had one in, in um, India, then one in Bangladesh, and finally one in, in Philippines. And I think, give or take, they were all reasonably good at what they did. The most important thing was actually the language barrier. So the most, trying to, trying to articulate what you want to do to someone who understands the fusion stuff and then translate that into something that's going to turn up in a campaign or, or a form is really difficult if they don't understand you correctly. And so we wound up um, dealing with someone in the Philippines for the, only for the one reason that they had really good command of English. Okay, so, um, and we've got someone now and he's a really, a really fabulous part of, of, um, of our team and he's really good to bounce off, and in actual fact I've used Richard less and less as I've become more comfortable with this guy. I still <coughs> use Richard for some new stuff that I'm about to do, but for a lot of the more routine stuff, we just, we just fire away, okay? Then we, <coughs> even, even accepting that we had a VA and, um, and uh, I was kind of going through a good learning curve, I, we still wound up having some speed bumps and, you know, you still get to the stage where you think you know more than what you actually do. And so it's, I think it's really important that as you go through the learning curve with, with, um, with uh, Infusionsoft that you um, consistently check yourself to make sure that in actual fact um, 
you're not getting too ambitious with what you're doing. And we wound up having a very unfortunate event where through a very poor use of tags, we wound up putting out two campaigns simultaneously. And um, the, the polite way would be to say we absolutely annoyed a number of people, a large number of people, because they wound up with an inundation of emails and they were identical. Because we'd had two similar, we were doing some testing, we accidentally <coughs> sent two campaigns to the same group of people. They didn't um, appreciate that. No, they don't. Sorry, can I ask a question? With that graph there, yeah. the time scale, is that, are we talking from February? days, 90 days? We're talking, we're talking, got an infusion soft in early February, within two or three weeks, so I had that, so that, it's not actually to scale, it's just trying, I'm just trying to demonstrate. So before so, you back up, so it's like a 60 day plan. I, I would say, I would say probably, for me, it was a bit longer because I made lots of mistakes being up front. Okay, so I would say it was probably 120 days before I was above the line again, easily. Right. So how many days to this point? So uh, th that point there, I would have been there in about 20 days. And to there? Uh, probably, probably 100. Okay. So this question is probably to the consultants. So we've got our staff do, I think they've got High Rise, Melchin, Stripe, and the sales guys have various different user basis. So would you run that in tandem whilst you have this? No. Uh, no is sufficient. <laughs> um, the, the biggest thing about putting any system, not just infusion soft things, but the existing team is it's change management. Yeah. Um, managing which is really easy with these two or three people when it's five or more, it's almost impossible. And the best thing you can do is work with each team one by one to this is how you do what you used to do. And then they're trying to do two things in tandem, they just go back to the old way. Because we've got different data sets as well for different products. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, sorry. It also depends how complex it is, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then finally, you see light at the end of the tunnel, and we've got one more click, I think, and become more self sufficient using more standard features. So the reason why I've talked about using more standard features, I keep going back to that initial thing where I was only using it for one thing, uh, you know, but what I didn't realise was the ability to make sure I captured all my customers, the ability to be able to, to market to them a lot more than what I was doing, the business automation within my own business. I wound up cutting out two staff as a result of business automation. So that, and that was all coming up. At, at what were the staff time. doing? Basically, basically following up. So, d recording. We were having information that was um, on um, voice logs, and they were recording it and putting it against a name. So it was lots. And then they were sending emails to the WordPress people to update files. That's all been automated. So now, no, we don't have, have anyone do that. It's all done automatically. Okay. Yeah. So I, what I thought I should talk about Kickstart because the, uh, the process has got room for improvement. So I'll just quickly go through that. So the people on being onboarded, I, I feel, do not understand the IS, uh, the Infusionsoft corporate structure. And I think, I think it would be handy for people to have an idea. Jake, I didn't realise that you were just you had your own agency, and it took a while for the penny to drop. You know, and I think. That would change. That would have changed my perception of how we were being trained if I'd known that. So that was they had no idea, you know, because the states will have you believe you're an infusion soft employee. Yeah, they do. They've been some of out saying that. Yeah, yeah. So you know, it, so that was the first thing. I think it's an important difference because it 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 makes it helps us understand why you in particular drive things the way you do. You know. The minute I understood that, that was fine. But after that, I was getting a bit grumpy, so yeah. Yeah, so that's the first thing. The second thing is every, every, everyone buying has a slightly different reason to implement, and each one has different levels of, of resource, expertise, budget available to implement. And to put two or three people, like to have a standalone startup business like myself, alongside an existing business with, with lots of resource around them to implement and to train and develop, it, it one, sh one stop shop can't fit all, you know? So I just think that, and so my next tab coming on, I think is um, maybe a standard introduction pack before you do kickstart might've been useful. Just giving, give, 
trying to give people like me, I would have really benefited from knowing, you know, how Infusionsoft is set up in a corporate structure. Um, and probably the biggest thing is, is um, getting my head around the importance of understanding your own business processes. And I'm going to talk about that quite a bit because you have got to understand your own business processes. <coughs> There's far too much information to absorb in the time frame allocated and cover individual needs of each participant, you know. So you've got, you know, people have got to go to these Infusionsoft courses um, and basically just to get a real taste. Um, and I don't, I know there's no easy way around it because it will be driven out of the States, but the reality is, is that, is that you, you get pulled into this thing and as a standalone business, um, you're going to have to quickly come to the reality, you're going to have to invest a lot more in it to get the real value out of it. But you'll see as I go through, it's worthwhile. Okay, so yeah. So knowing what I know now, for, and this is specifically around, around my business, okay, so we just keep on going with you. I would have paid more attention to mapping my own business processes, and, I, and if I would known this in advance, I would have, I would have mapped my processes to depth. Uh, um, unfortunately for me, I still thought I knew about marketing at the point that I went to this course. <laughs> it would have been flawed. However, you know, it's just so important, particularly around understanding tagging and the concepts that are in Infusionsoft and matching Infusionsoft's logic processes to your business is really important. Don't underestimate it in my view. I don't know, Jake, if, but it just, to me it's just really important. So really what important. might be an option is if you had different data sets is to maybe just look at one. So we've got different views and it's to just go after one, say 7,000 data set and then just use Infusionsoft as a hierarchized MailChimp process and see how it works. Kind of thing, yeah, rather than getting into the other parts of the business. Mm. So you might want to choose your sensors. Well, the high rise mountain is about 1% more than the So, understanding the correct use of tag titles and the timing from day one, I made lots of mistakes thinking that tagging was easy then realising I needed to understand the process before I got into it. So I wasted a lot of time creating a nightmare for myself then having to remove all the tags and start again. So that was, that was an important lesson for me. Um, cut down on word process development um, cost for the main website. I wish I'd known about, about Infusionsoft as we were building the website because in actual fact a lot of the stuff we built in WordPress I would have preferred to have built in Infusionsoft but it came too late. But even then, my developer was wanting to stay with WordPress, and I had to get fairly towy. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we wound up with too much still in WordPress. But I don't mind like what sort of functionalities? Uh, money around e-commerce, yeah. you know, uh, the shopping site thing, and so you know, it, it can be a nightmare inside WordPress, frankly. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think to have the whole thing integrated inside Infusionsoft will just so make we use Stripe for our advertising big so that goes into Infusionsoft as opposed to WordPress or whatever. Stripe's only a gateway, yeah. so it's only a payment gateway. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Sorry, I don't know. yeah. So, um, so, do you mean creating the website in Infusionsoft? No, 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 no. Just, just the. You'd have the. You'd have. You'd have the. You, you'd be able to see. Well, there's lots of ways you can do it, but my understanding is you could still have your website, but. The actual shopping site would actually be right. in Infusionsoft. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not. A, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Um, did you actually integrate? Um, none of those integration tools between your WordPress shopping cart like WooCommerce into Infusionsoft. Did you do that? Or? Not yet, but that's going to be my intention. But my developer wants to continue to develop it in WordPress. But I'm saying no. Mm. We're going to migrate it either. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And that's one of the debates I've got. Sure. And, and last, it, it cut down some staff out of the admin team immediately, so I, I got rid of two admin staff as soon as I got, I realised what I could do with uh, automation. We, were, we had people just moving bits of paper as information came in from customers and I just didn't need them anymore, okay? So how many staff did you have? At, at, the, you at the top of implementation I had 13, so I'm down to about six. Yeah, but some of them are because parts of the project are finished. But the pure admin team, I had an admin team of five. I'm down to three. 
I should have taken more time to understand what infusion stuff really can do. So it just keeps coming back to that original mm. comment of mine: is, is don't just focus on what you can do. Try and understand the product a bit more. Okay. I'm glad as a small business owner I did the infusion soft kickstart myself and did not delegate it. I think people that send someone else to to uh, do the infusion soft training are just dreaming. You know, the owner. One of the beauties of, of me doing Kickstart is even though I, I thought I knew a lot more than what I actually did, I at least had a conceptual view of what we were trying to do. So being able to find the right people, whether they're VAs or, you know, presenting something to Richard and saying, Richard, what is, is this okay? And you'd say, no, that's a load of rubbish, but you should be able to do this. So it was really important that I had enough of the knowledge to start that process. Okay. <coughs> Uh, I should have had a customer service person at the at the kickstart, not my developer, frankly. That would have been a lot more helpful. Okay. What's that? Um, because because I think I think um, Infusionsoft is about is about interacting with the customer actually and how you bring the customer in. And with all due respect to my developer, he's a geek in the back room that gets the thing working, and he's got no idea. Yeah. So, so basically, from my euphoric um, wow at the top, I did this massive slide into oh my god territory, yeah, where, where nothing competed or work. Okay, so we'll just we'll just quickly go through that. So what went wrong? So just keep yep. I'll keep going. Yep. So I overvalued my level of expertise. I knew enough to be dangerous. Okay, <laughs> so so and it sounds a bit funny, but trust me, I just about threw the computer out the window a few times, yeah. So I couldn't I couldn't get campaigns to work. It was I, I overcomplicated campaigns. I had I had, you know, sequences upon sequences upon sequences and just totally confused myself. So one really good thing for people starting out is keep it simple. Start with a simple campaign and build it. And I seem to recollect that Jake told me to do that, but I knew better. So <laughs> That's uh, not something I say. Sorry? That's not yeah, I think you did, yeah. I spent weeks and weeks achieving nothing. I just went around in circles. I couldn't get campaigns to work. and But trust me, it gets better. It does, yeah. Okay. I did not use tags properly. It's going back to my earlier comment. Um, understanding the whole business process and mapping it out before you start, I think, is really important. But also, allied to that, understand what Infusionsoft's logic is, particularly around marketing. For someone like me who is in the market, it's really important to understand that. Okay. I used the wrong language and email content. I, we wound up getting smarter with that, and we had A and B and C, so we could actually test different ones and see. So that was that was important. So we um, and we didn't start out well, but it, it wound up coming pretty good. We put out a fatally flawed campaign, which is what I talked about, which an advertisement that we sent to campaigns identically simultaneously to the same people. And you really accidentally put out a fatally flawed campaign. Accidentally. Yeah. Yeah. So why did you do that? Sorry? So I, I read it as that, that's what you wanted oh, to do. Oh, no, 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 no. What? <laughs> I could not find affordable expertise to start up. So being a startup, obviously funding, I'm funding the whole thing. So, you know, um, and I think what, what I was grasping with is that there is so much opportunity for the consultants here in Australia. Um, you know, we can perceive as high risk people, so we don't get the attention. And that's just a commercial reality of life and we've got to learn to deal with it. So you have to go offshore. Um, that's what's going to happen for a startup business. And um, so that was one of my challenges. And as I, I've already um, experienced uh, that I had to go offshore for a VA and I had a mixed response on that. And I realised my core database was a mess because we'd, we'd started using spreadsheets. Um, I'd gone to the Philippines and trained the girls and, and um, a couple of them were pretty good but a couple of them were terrible. Um, and then we had an unfortunate experience where the last CRM package we were using which didn't work so we'd had material taken into the database and taken out again. It was just we had duplicate records and you name it, it was wrong. So I, yeah. So what was your mixed response to the VAs? What was the good, what was the bad? So um, so the, the, the good with them is, to be honest, they're cheap. Um, and um, the one that I've got now is, is a really smart guy and he thinks outside the square and he offers opinion. 
um, and I'm really happy with the guy I've got now. But the two before, I found that one, they, they did not uh, comprehend what we were trying to do well enough. Um, and we found that they did not think outside the square at all about what was being the issue that was in front of us. They simply followed you letter for letter um, what you had told them and didn't think about what, what they were trying to achieve. So what eventually happened was if you had a mistake in your logic as you built a campaign, they, they faithfully put it in. Okay? Mm. And so this became very frustrating. So it's just so important to find the right person to, to work with a VA offshore. The other thing was I found there was I found a couple of groups actually where where they purported to have good expertise uh, and these were VAs that were actually run as a consulting agency in the Philippines. Uh, but they wanted money up front and I just wasn't prepared to do that. So some of the ones that you will come across, uh, what happens is they're a part of some kind of collective and you've got to pay like, you know, you know, a hundred hours up front and then they'll do the work. So and you, I just did you have a problem with paying up front or paying such a large chunk? So, well given my first experience was with the with the guys in India and Bangladesh, I wasn't convinced at that stage that I was going to get value for money out of paying for a hundred hours and finding that I was having to spoon feed and not getting the response I wanted. So I wound up backing off that and then using Odesk and um, and now called Upwork to source the right kind of guy. It, to me, it was just too risky. You know, I didn't want to fork out. And it was not only the money because the money wasn't big given in the scheme of things. It was more about the lost time I was going to lose, having a hundred hours or well, actually they wanted five hundred hours. It takes a lot to consume five hundred hours. And what if it wasn't actually up to standard? I had no way of knowing. Yeah. So yeah. And what have they charged them? The, actually, that was interesting. The, the one where they were part of the group was um, $15 an hour. Okay, well, that's, it's, not, it's cheap, but, but you're paying it, hundreds of hours yeah, as a block. It, yeah. and, it's, and it's the opportunity cost you miss because you've got a burning bridge behind you with everything else that's going on with developing the business. You can't afford that to get behind, so you need a project manager to keep it up with you. You don't mind a little tip for finding the eggs. Sorry? You don't mind me suggesting a little tip for finding the Yeah. Go on Upwork and no risk, whatever. Yeah. And put a job out, and it's a relatively mo a moderate task. Mm -hmm. And then you put it out, and you pay 15, 20, 30 people, however many apply for it, to do the same thing. You look at the response you get, the communication you get back. And you could put one out, but the, the price range from 35 bucks an hour to 87 cents an hour. And the one that was, because uh, actually, I put them as 10, and this guy even said, I can do this for you, but I'm 35 bucks an hour. But yeah, go on, turn it on a little more. And he came back with this huge list of, well, you said you wanted this, but I figured this, 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 mm -hmm. and this was way more important, so I put them in too. I was like, good job. Yeah. So, now that $35 an hour, which is, what, 76 times more than 87 cents, is yeah. worth every cent. Yeah. Because the problems that you haven't even anticipated will even solve for you. Because mm. I don't, I can't code with the HP, I have no idea. I don't know what Rescue API is. I cannot do it for myself. And having someone who can say, you forgot this bit, by the way, yeah. it's worth paying mm. $25 more. But there's lots of different types of VAs as well, like different yeah. price points who offer different skill sets and different value as well. So it's and it's about who matches. Mm. matches well, the one I've got now is. Now I like technical VAs yeah. and PHP and, yeah. and Ruby and Rails stuff. Yeah. You get, go to India to get massive projects at a dollar an hour. That's mm. not, not what you get. Mm. Not, not support service mm. so I'm paying $12 an hour for my one now and I'm really happy yeah $12 an hour and I'm really happy with it yeah. yeah yeah do you use lead pages inside Infusionsoft yeah we'll, we'll come to that okay. yeah so yeah okay So well, I got to the bottom of the canyon and I, you know, basically I went weeks with no progress. In fact, we went backwards because in actual fact, the rest of my project was going ahead, but my interaction with the customers wasn't. And it was, and I was beginning to think Infusionsoft was an expensive, big mistake for boat break. I really was. <coughs> so I just move on. Then I met Richard and he gave me uh, a lot of moral support as well. I think that's really important. 
Oh, it was great, thank you, Richard. And he didn't pay me to do that. So, um, among other things, uh, just having someone to audit campaigns, particularly that have been done by VAs offshore, just to make sure that they actually stack up, I found gave me huge comfort that when we pushed the button and we were sending it out, we weren't making a fool of ourselves. And I think it's a really good peace of mind to, to get someone who locally you trust that actually can just audit and make sure that you're on the right track. Okay, um, we've, I think we've talked about that one. Um, Is it a VA that help you only with Infusionsoft or some other aspect? No, yeah, he's, he, he does use other aspects. He's actually quite a good marketing guy. So mm. he will frequently come back and say, I think you should use these words, not these words. Or have you thought about this approach, not that approach? Or as it is now, we're talking about lead pages. He's actually right on to it with, with what I should be doing with lead pages and lead magnets. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I started, <coughs> I started to make uh, progress with understanding the product and, and the biggest thing is I just kept using it, you know, and um, I wound up doing three weeks telemarketing myself, so I got on the phone and was ringing people myself, and in doing that, I learned to use the automation so well. It was a, just an incredibly great learning thing, and it helped cement in my mind what we had to do with processes so that we didn't have customers falling off. So by understanding the automation, it means that you can make sure you put a note in and an appointment for a particular person to ring so-and-so the next day, or you've got to wait three weeks and on the, on the 22nd day, you know, um, Vic Hensley must ring so-and-so and it just is all laid out and no one disappears off the radar. It is so important. Yep. I love it. We cleaned up our database, so it was, um, it was great. Uh, we, we ran three OKs, and we, but we did have a speed bump. So we just, as we go through, and that was that little flat piece. I, I continue to develop my own skills with IS, and I'm not there by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm a lot more comfortable working with the product now. I realised I knew nothing about brand and marketing, and, I, and I'm still struggling with that. And uh, it sounds funny, but you know, it's actually a serious issue for a small business, and I realised that really late in the piece, and, and so I'm paying a price for that right now. I was still being reactive and not proactive. So, you know, you've really got to be on the front foot with trying to, to plan what's going to happen with your campaigns and how you're going to deal with issues that come up. And I'm finding that I'm still a little reactive. I'm a little bit more proactive these days, but, um, you know, all this has happened. So you try and f put something in in a hurry and invariably you do it wrong. So you just try and try and plan a bit more. I gain confidence with my offshore VA. I keep bringing that up. I didn't realise that. I started to realise there was a lot more potential with IS, you know, and in particular, you know, the marketing side, um, Facebook, um, the power of Facebook, the, the power of regular contact with the customers. Um, one thing that our website, so every time someone on our website either clicks onto a particular listing, so if you've got a boat, if you've got a, a business that services radars, for argument's sake, what, what will happen is every time someone looks at your listing, it registers in the background on WordPress. Every time someone clicks on your phone number or your um, e address, yeah. it also registers. So we've now automated a process, well, it's, it's semi-automated, so we'll need to do a bit more work, but it's semi-automated, automated, where at the end of every month we can do a download um, in, in a CSV file of, of all of the, um, of the views, um, address clicks, or um, uh, phone clicks, and it automatically flows into a, um, it goes into custom fields that I've built inside Infusionsoft, and we email everyone what their views are for the month, all automated. Just fabulous. Yeah, I'm pretty proud to say I did that whole thing myself, one end to the other. Well done. And what yeah. do you capture of that, what information do you capture when they click on you? We, we're, we're capturing whether they've just viewed the page, whether they've clicked on the address, or they've clicked on the phone number. So you as a customer are going to be told this month you've had 35 page views, three people have clicked your address, and two people have clicked your phone number. From me interacting, it's, I'm actually giving you some value on the listing by, by telling you how much people oh. are interacting. So the, yeah. The, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's just a tool that we can use. It's effectively a marketing tool because it costs us nothing to, to 
assemble that information now that we've got everything set up, but we're giving some value back to the listing customer. Because they're paying for the listing. Well, that, some of them aren't, but what this does is it gives us an opportunity to present some value to them. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Uh, we were still not using automation as well as we could have. So, um, the next one. Staff were still using spreadsheets and they were banned. Okay, so... The staff or the spreadsheets? <laughs> <laughs> well, we wound up banning two staff as a result. Now, we talked about... We talked I, about... I told you you'd do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. why I have to stop using it. Yeah, like, it was un incredible that, that three months after I had Infusion stuff installed, I found out that three staff were still using spreadsheets. And I was furious. So these are the sales guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not and, uncommon. Yeah, I know. But in the end, they, the threat was, if you continue to use it one more day, you don't work for me. And two of them continued, so they're gone. It was so important that you got it, you know, but they just didn't understand it. You know, they were familiar with spreadsheets. And I think, you know... I, what was the difficulty for the sales staff to use in future stuff? It's just, it just that wasn't the way they'd always ever done it. Sales people tend to be sales. very routine yeah. in their process. And paperwork and things like that is not a major thing in their mindset, it's selling. So when they get used to doing something manually, you go and replace that with an automated system, which from our viewpoint saves them a lot of time, it's got all these advantages, they don't see it that way. You have to go through an education process to bring them mm. over. But How I'm fully support say? of you know, what Jake's saying is just cut it off and make yeah. them do it. Make, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I can yeah. see where you, where you come from, but um, yeah. it can create, a, if, if you've got good staff and they're having trouble coming over and you do that sort of option, <coughs> you know, sales people can oh. leave. Yeah. They don't want good sales people. Yeah, the reality is infusion soft drives accountability mm -hmm. because yeah. everything's actually traceable. I was about to say that. Yeah. So sales teams, is the one is they like to control everything themselves and have it yeah. which they don't tell anybody else what's on it. Yeah. And the other is they don't want them to know that they're not doing things. Yeah. It's a too big reason, too big kickback to buy from sales teams and every single company over about six employees that we've worked with. Which is? So sales teams not wanting anyone to know what they're doing. Yeah. Because we had. Wouldn't it be to their advantage because they're calling the right person? Yes, but they yeah. feel like they're being spoiled. So they're going to close the deal. Yeah, yeah. but they oh. get more but then with the spreadsheet, it's not easy for me to see what that person's cool, doing. Yeah. But with Infusionsoft, it's really easy. I can jump on, look at their customers for the day. Bingo. Hey, we, we always say to them, like, you never have to send a follow up email ever again. Yeah. You'll we'll never forget to call someone ever again. You think you're going to get more sales that way or less? Mm. And more sales means more efficient than you imagine. Ultimately, what gets them over is more commission. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we changed the VA from India to Philippines, so we just. Why? Kept, um, language. It was all about language. And with all due respect to our Indian colleagues in Bangladesh, I could not understand a word of what they were saying. You know, it was really difficult. Yep. Uh, and we had to stop and re-evaluating our marketing. So I was using, you know, very traditional means and basically I couldn't trace what I was doing, but by, mm -hmm. by turning my attention to what the potential was in Infusionsoft, it created opportunity for me. And I stopped using offshore telemarketers. So um, I've actually stopped telemarketing altogether for the time being. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and when I do start again, I'm going to be using New Zealand telemarketers, not Australian. But um, I've been to New Zealand to train them with the Infusionsoft platform. Why and New Zealand telemarketers? Because at least when a New Zealander rings an Australian, they won't get the same response they'll get when a Filipino rings them. With all Is it cheaper to ring from New Zealand? Uh, we, I, I don't. Hmm, I've got to be careful to answer this one. I get better productivity out of New Zealanders than I do out of Australians. Yeah. Mm. For a start, I only pay... I only pay um, Twenty dollars an hour in New Zealand dollars, okay, and they work longer hours and there's less penalty rates. I can't lose. How do you go with the time difference? Do you have any issue on the project? No, they're quite time? happy because you know, even if you if, even if you would employ a telemarketer here in Sydney, you've still got the WA issue. Mm -hmm. So the ones from uh, the ones that I've actually wound up employing, they're very they they regularly telemarket into Australia. 
So during I'm, our favourable times. So. Yes, all for times here. Yeah. And also, not only the money, but I understand the culture, like the the sense the, of humour, the culture, the language, more than yeah, someone that, living in the Philippines. Yeah, right. that's right. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, some seasoned charter boat operator, you know, he knows that, that when someone from the Philippines and probably female rings, they don't know one end of the boat from the other. Whereas if, you know, once you know, the, the New Zealand ones, I'm getting guys, I'm not getting women. And um, they obviously at least know one end of the boat from another, and mm. that's important. Okay. So we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, but we're not flying yet. Yeah. So um, we've learned to use some, but not all of the processes of automation. So we're getting there. When we just continually adding, so we, we add little pieces as we realise. So um, I'm gonna, the next area I'm going to be heading to, to Richard. If you just keep, yeah. Uh, we're running simple campaigns regularly, so we're not. We're not trying to do big campaigns any longer. Uh, they're relatively small. We're, we've actually segmented. I've got a database of about 11,000 customers, but we wound up tagging them down. So we're actually tagging them to in a particular, so in, in, for example, in marine services, rather than just emailing to a group with the tag marine services, I'm emailing to charter boat operators or to marine electricians or I've, I can now focus it right down and just so my messages are customised to that particular group of the market. Excellent. So we've got down to that level of detail now. Okay. It makes a nightmare for me because I'm constantly trying to think of how I reconfigure the messages to suit the audience. So you're running more campaigns but less in each. Yes. More, more loads of focus. Yes, like correct. Targeting. Yeah. So for argument's sake, We've just finished a set on uh, charter boats for argument's sake, you know, and and it's about it's about so the the headline is you know put more people on every every boat trip, you know, well you can't say that to a marine electrician, <laughs> right? So so you you and the you know, we've had an opening rate on that particular campaign of of thirty two percent, so it's pretty good, you know? okay. So the, um, if you're doing thirty two percent open rate on an email. When you say they're your clients, have they done business with you? Or yes. Well, see, or you yeah, go, let's go back. We'll just take a step out. back. So, so you remember I said I, I, what I knew about what I knew about marketing could be written on a postage stamp with a four-inch paintbrush. Yeah, yeah, it's just nothing. And so the first thing I had to do was actually establish a brand. So, so we wound up realizing that we had to go through a twelve-month awareness campaign. So what? What we do is, all we do is we, we go to them and say, hey, we're, we're Boat Brat, and we're a directory site, and we're location based, blah, 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 take a look at your listing. If they, so that 30% have opened the listing and said, yeah, the listing's okay, or no, can we please make some changes? The minute they do that, what we do is we actually feature the listing on the website. They chose initially to be a listing? No, they're free. It's totally so you, free. So you've ordered them basically. Yep, yep. Yeah. And then what we do is for three months, we have them as a featured listing free on the website where we give them statistics. So what they will see is over that three months, they will see their, their um, hit rates on the website will, will rise, and they do because we know that there are about eight times more hits when you're a featured listing compared to when you're not. So you trial listings, put them into your system and then... Three months, and after three months we say to you, okay guys, yeah, sure. yeah, you've had your free time. Now it's pay time. So that's the process that we're going through. Okay. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, two admin staff have been removed because of business automation. Okay, and most importantly, I'm, I'm comfortable that every query is being actioned, you know, so it, everything that comes in, we're not missing that email and not responding because actually it goes into an automation process and we can, and it, it if you, if you accidentally forget it, guess what? When you turn on the next morning, there it is sitting on your task for the day. It's there, okay? Ooh. Yeah, so it's great, okay? So, um, yeah, no one drops off the radar, so every lead is precious. Okay, so we started regular mail outs and newsletters. So we're not flying yet, but we're getting there, all right? So it's a photo I took in Bali, I couldn't get over it. So next steps. So the use of landing pages and lead magnets, okay? So. I had a fabulous day with a lovely lady called Sam up in, um, in Newcastle last week and we talked about digital marketing and, it's, and I've got to be honest, 
Um, my developer failed to figure out how I was going to connect with the customers. Uh, now the customers, there's two, two groups of people actually. The customers, which are the people that have the listings, and then there are the consumers who are the voting public that will use the customer services. That's a bit complicated. We had no way of capturing them into the into the into Infusionsoft, so we could market back to them. So um, we're just about to start on that process now. So we've we've used um, the precursor to to uh, SyncSumo, and with the object is that we'll use SyncSumo later on to just test it and make sure it's okay, and then we'll move into that. But we're also now moving into creating uh, lead magnets, landing pages to bring people in, get them to register so then we can turn around and market back to them. We're going to use Facebook for awareness. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we've taken all our listings out of Infusionsoft and we're going, we can create these, um, sorry Jake, what was the word again? The, um, and in Facebook, the custom, audience. custom audiences, audiences. Yep. create custom audiences and we can just start making it so that they can see that there's this thing called boat rat around so we're not, we're not necessarily wanting them to do anything for the moment but at least when they get an email, seeing the boat brat logo is not a complete surprise. Okay. okay. Um, and then the object will be to go into e-commerce. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a question for landing page. Do you use the, what? Do you use on the WordPress or instant page? Or uh, we, we've. That's a bit of a debate within our, uh, within my group right now. So uh, one group of people are saying use lead pages, which is a which is a standalone piece of software. And um, and we've got another one within WordPress, which I'm not that happy with, which I can't for the life of me remember the name for, for a moment. So we're going to be testing both to see which one we use. But both, I think our lead pages integrates very well with Infusionsoft. Yeah, so mm. and it's really easy to use. I use Instant Page and it also integrates very easy. Yeah. But I didn't use a... People cancel lead pages in this community. I've never used it myself, but they all they say, oh, lead pages is the one that most Start with. And they all move away from it without fail. I've never used it, so I don't know why. What do they move to? Uh, a lot of them just use WordPress. WordPress, yeah. Plugins. Um, there's heaps of plugins WordPress. Yeah. The plugins are. Oh, the it's not that cheap either. Mm -hmm. It's not cheap at all. Lead page. No. Lead page. Yeah. Compared to WordPress, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Different plugins. Yeah. Instant page is $30. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, and that's my vote. <laughs> <laughs> so, that kind of a paper at midnight. Yeah. <laughs> someone, tried to, expense? someone tried to do that. <laughs> you get it as a Dutch. I can't remember that. No, once you've got a number on them in Australia, that's it. So, yeah. uh, anyway, any more questions? So, I, I don't know if this is really what you wanted, Richard, but it just. Well, it's just. Uh, I, know, I don't know. Would you guys? Just, yeah. I have a question. Sure. What tasks. Do you get your VA to do? Um, so it's got to the stage now where I can actually assemble a simple campaign myself very quickly. I use him to audit it. How much time? Quick, like two hours? Uh, yep, two hours will we'll do a simple campaign for me because mm -hmm. a lot of them are kind of done now. So I just copy, you know, mm -hmm. just co copy the whole campaign or rename the campaign and then I just change the messaging slightly to a different group. Mm -hmm. um, often I will get him to double check my tags. So making sure, and I'd have to say that I still struggle with making sure that the tagging is right. So we need, because there's nothing worse than thinking you're starting a campaign with one group and in actual fact you're kicking off another group somewhere else. So that's happened before today. So, um, and, then, and then depending on my time constraints, I now have enough confidence that if I say to, to my guy, Adam, look, you know, this is what's happening and I need a campaign to do this, he'll actually create it for me. He knows my business well enough. Does he write it or just... The um, he'll he'll put in some basic words, but um, he at the end of the day, the content's got to be driven by us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you were talking. I got a question in regards. To, um, you were saying that it's very important to understand your processes and to use mapping processes too. Mm -hmm. Can you name a few tools that has been I, helpful well, I, to you? I just use um, I just use uh, a Microsoft product. The name just escaped me for a moment. Vizio. 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 I just use Vizio. And it's simple and it's easy to use and I, yeah, I swear by it. Okay. What do you use that for? To map it? Vizio. To mapping, yeah. It's got a nice little mapping tool in it. Why don't you just use Campaign Builder? 
No, 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 no. Before you get to Campaign Builder, because lots of things go on with Campaign Builder, to get a nice, simple... I suppose yeah, you could if you wanted to. I don't think there's anything to stop you doing that. But the, the reason I use Visio is because I map my processes. It gives me the opportunity to move things around super easy. And I actually can highlight in big bold the tags so I can see what the tags are as I go along the line. Okay, so in Campaign Builder, you can't see what tag names you've got there in a chain. Where in Visio, you can put them all up there and see what's happening. Okay. And you'd be surprised how often you think you understand your process, but you write it down and hey presto, you have got Don't it wrong. Do you find you need more than two dimensions though when you're working in physio? Not really. You need to be able to drill down to another layer? Oh, sometimes, but yeah, there's, there's ways to deal with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I manage it fine. Yeah. You're using yeah. Mobit? No, I'm about to. You yeah, that's my next challenge. Because once again, you know, my, my industrious. Um, developer didn't separate landline numbers from mobile numbers when we first built the database. <laughs> <laughs> Despite being a requirement of mine when I wrote the spec. Yeah, so well, anyway, that's what happens. Where's that boat moored? Uh, now. Now. What do you mean? In, in that photo? Well, no, where does it live? Uh, right now in Pitwater. So are you a Sydney, a local Sydney man? Mm. Yeah. It's about to move to New Zealand. So in a few weeks' time. Yeah. With or without you? Uh, with, uh, I'm going to go part time. Um, it's going to. There's a ship coming into Sydney and it sinks, and then you steam it on, and then it, the ship lifts up and away it goes. How much does that cost? <laughs> so it's about thirteen thousand US to get it over. So I I weighed up steaming it over myself, but by the time you put by the time you put extra diesel and you have to I have to board up all the windows and. And put a special life raft and flares and all sorts of special radios. It's not worth it. Just put it on a boat and get it there. Mm. All right, any more questions? Thanks very much, Vic. <laughs>